So, good morning everyone. Uh, my name is Jacques Delier. Maybe we met before. I've been running with my team the gastroenterology and endotherapy workshop for the last 20 years and this year with the COVID crisis we had to postpone our next meeting to 2021 in June. It's really a pity for us, but we also had a fantastic experience, very difficult experience with this COVID crisis. And we felt useful to give you a little bit of overview of how we manage uh, our GI endoscopy department during this crisis. To give you also maybe an update which may be useful of the current literature we have we have about COVID-19, not only related with endoscopy, but also in general. And maybe even more importantly and usefully for what you need for the next uh, days or weeks, uh, we will give you a, a small presentation on what we feel are the challenge for uh, the comeback to a normal life or to reschedule our procedure what are the caution to be done, and maybe what will be the impact on our activity, because it is quite sure that this crisis will, on the long term, have also an impact on what we work. So we do not pretend to give you the final <laughs> solution, of course. This is just trying to give you an example of what we have done, which can be shared. Maybe we will have the opportunity to discuss together the next time you come in Brussels or the next time we are visiting you. Uh, and hopefully we will have the possibility also to discuss face-to-face uh, -face and not only by uh, screen uh, intermediate. So uh, it's a pleasure for me to introduce these three lectures which will be given, each of them, by one of my close co-workers. My name is Sai Bozani and it's a pleasure for me to present you this first webinar prepared by the Jew team from Erasmus Hospital in Brussels. In this webinar we will talk about how we faced to the COVID pandemic in its beginning. Indeed, we found interesting to present you our experience facing the unprecedented health situation that all of us medical and paramedical teams are living. In this first webinar, we will see how our endoscopy department adapted to this crisis and its impact on our daily practice and activity. Everybody knows that COVID-19 outbreak caused um, by SARS-CoV-2 started in China in last December and globally spread to the entire world so that the World Health Organization declared it as pandemic in the beginning of March. This virus is transmitted by direct contact, droplets, and probably by fecal-oral way. Because the unprecedented uh, sheer scale and rapidity of spread, countries were faced to the shortage of resources. And a significant proportion of confirmed cases was found in healthcare personnel, Moreover, aerosol generating procedures like ENT fibroscopy, endotracheal intubation, bronchoscopy, and probably GI endoscopy are at very high risk of contamination. Therefore, infection prevention and control measures in endoscopy units are of paramount of importance for first the patient safety. Secondly, the protection of the healthcare personnel, but also to avoid nosocomial outbreaks and to allow the rational use of limited personal equipment, protective equipment. In Belgium, the first case was detected in the beginning of February in a patient who was back from China. One month later, Following cases were detected and unfortunately the first death occurred on March 11. Three days after, the National Hospital Emergency Plan was announced, 
quickly followed by the global lockdown. In our hospital, the emergency plane was announced a few days earlier. The goal of this plan was to ensure the abilities of the hospital to deal with the expected flux of COVID patients and consisted in a global reorganization with creation of specific and separated circuits for patients suspected or confirmed COVID with the opening of COVID dedicated units. It consisted also in uh, physical distancing, both for patients and healthcare personnel. If vital therapies like chemotherapy and dialysis were maintained, all intervention, examination, consultation, which are neither urgent nor necessary, were immediately cancelled. A brief word about uh, the term necessary pro procedure. Of course, majority of our procedures are necessary, but in this presentation, uh, we will define necessary procedure as uh, a procedure which, if delayed, may compromise the, um, the patient outcome. All this plan had a significant impact on the endoscopy departments because two-thirds of physicians and one-fourth nurse of nurses were requisitioned in the COVID units. Moreover, two-thirds of ventilators and 40% of monitors were also requisitioned. And five of our 12 endoscopy uh, rooms were also closed. Finally, the consequences of all these measures were the limitation of the total number of patients treated and also the limitation uh, of procedures uh, performed under deep sedation or general anesthesia. Thus, the majority of procedures were postponed after phone contact performed by our medical team to assess the degree of emergency of each procedure. So let's see together what was the adaptation of our endoscopic department in terms of patient risk stratification, limited by the fact that we could not screen the whole population in Belgium, but also in terms of precaution uh, taken by staff members during procedures, the processing and decontamination, and how we stratify the priority of the indication of each endoscopy. As I said before, in Belgium, because the shortage of resources, we could not screen the whole population. So in the beginning of the spread, all patients entering the hospital were screened by the emergency departments, firstly according to their signs and symptoms, uh, and were stratified in low group low-risk and high-risk groups. After this first step, only high-risk ones were screened by nasal swab and thoracic CT scan and hospitalized in uh, COVID units. All patients entering the endoscopy department wear a surgical mask and to avoid cross-contamination, workflows were decided with creation of a specific pathway for COVID patients and contaminated equipment. All procedures of, for high-risk or confirmed COVID patients were performed in a specific room with negative pressure only by a senior endoscopist. And because the lack of protection equipment, the maximal PPE were reserved only to staff members performing procedure in high-risk or confirmed COVID patients. The maximal PPE include FFP2, hair nets, face shields, water-resistant gown, and two pairs of gloves. When performing procedure in low-risk patients, the protection includes surgical mask, hair nets, ace protection, and gown. So, to summarize, according to the patient uh, timing admission, the screening pathway was different. 
In case of positive test, the procedure was performed only if it was considered as emergency in a negative pressure room and with the maximal PPE. While in case of negative test, the procedure was performed in a conventional way. About the reprocessing and the decontamination of endoscopes and rooms, we did not change our policies, which already follow European guidelines. About the prioritization, because no international recommendation existed at the beginning of the spread to guide us, no clear government and definition of necessary procedure, so only urgent procedures were performed during the first weeks. And we decided on March 17 to stratify the endoscopies according to the degree of urgency between treaty type. The first type, urgent procedures, which were immediately performed like GI bleeding, procedure for sepsis drainage, foreign body extraction, or early tips for valvular bleeding. Necessary procedures were performed according to available resources and if patient was COVID negative. The decision was taken after case-by-case -case discussion. And I remind you, the, the term necessary procedures is defined uh, for us as a procedure which, if delayed, may compromise the patient outcome. Low-risk procedures were the following and were postponed beyond 12 weeks. Now, let's see together the impact on our endoscopy activity. Let's start with the evolution of global GI endoscopy activity during March and April of last year in the upper part of and this year in the bottom. And as you can see, the drop of activity affected both urgent and non-urgent procedures. When we analyze data according to each endoscopy procedure type, we see that from the third week of March, the number of upper GI endoscopies decreased by more than 80%. Lower GI endoscopy also dramatically dropped simultaneously. This is confirmed when we compare it to the last to the three last years. And the number of echoendoscopy procedures were divided by four. The main indication were therapeutic and selected oncological cases. ERCP was less affected with a reduction by less than one half of the indications. It's interesting to note that the number of acute cholangitis has dropped. This contrasts with other urgent upper GI endoscopy indications which were unaffected. This point will need further investigations. Interest, interestingly, newly diagnosed neoplastic obstruction presented with jaundice were unaffected. Moreover, the preoperative bilirubin in this group of patients was similar to previous years, which may suggest that patient management was not delayed. During the last six weeks, emergency endoscopies were performed mainly for bleeding, more than 40% for upper GI bleeding and 15% for lower GI bleeding, followed by biliary drainage for 20%. The last 20% are distributed between other indications. One-fourth of emergency procedures were performed in COVID patients. This is the comparison between this year and the three last year of upper GI endoscopies performed for hematemesis and melena during the second part of March and April. Based on this comparison, upper GI endoscopy for this indication seem not have a significant modification. In contrast, colonoscopies performed from hematochesia and melina have dramatically decreased during the same period. This would have a significant impact on our future activity because patients with this necessary indication didn't have their 
examination yet. So to conclude, the COVID pandemic had a significant immediate impact on the endoscopic department at a human and material on human and material resources and on clinical activity, partially spurred for the emergency procedures. Next steps should consider mid and long term clinical impact of procedures postponing and integrating our new hygiene measures which represent so far our best protection against this virus for our daily activity. Thank you for your attention.